you're on your way to heaven. Amen. 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 Uh, just uh, uh, up here looking at us and, and wondering what we can do to uh, stir some hearts to join us and, and get in here and go to heaven with us. And Amen. My, uh, my sister, they had something going on at, at uh, their church. And uh, uh, I don't remember exactly what she did, but she went. She won a brand new Honda motorcycle. And uh, when the when the pastor uh, uh, presented it to her, he whispered to her. He said, "I'll give you five thousand for it right now." And uh, uh, we can't do that, but we want you to know we're praying with you that everybody that we talk to and witness to about the Lord that they can somehow wake up to the urgency and realize that there's heaven to gain and hell to shun. And I'm telling you, our loved ones, and, and I know you know all this, but that's just like uh, breathing. Sometimes when we uh, get to the place that we need some help, we don't realize how much help we need. That's what caused me to wind up in the hospital with COVID. I, was, I thought I was doing okay and started walking down the sidewalk there at the parsonage and I made about two of those sections and uh, had to turn around and go back. And uh, so I headed that way. And I'm telling you what, God knows where we're at. He knows what we're going through and we're not going through it alone. Amen? Amen. Amen. Just because it's not exactly uh, a fiery furnace like Dan Daniel, uh, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went through, uh, whatever it is, he'll be with us. Amen? Amen. All right. Praise Amen. the Lord. Why don't we stand this morning? Let's just invite the presence of the Lord. I don't know if you've got needs that uh, we need to take to the Lord, but let's remember uh, Sister Thomas, Brother and Sister Thomas's grandson, his wife, uh, had a blood clot in her lungs or something and she was pregnant and they had to take her to the hospital and take the baby C-section and everything. She's still in the hospital then she she was in ICU from Friday night up or Friday morning early in the night. Um, but let's pray for them and God knows every need. Amen. Amen. Why don't we raise our hands if we've got a need today and let's just ask God to just intervene. Thank him for what he's doing. Lord, we love you today. We just thank you and we praise you, Lord, for your goodness and for your mercy. We thank you for the blood, Lord, that you've uh, applied to our hearts and lives and the way you minister to us, God. Lord, you know the things that you want to accomplish in us and through us, Lord, for your glory. Oh, Lord, help us to not take things lightly, Lord, but to, to realize, God, Lord, things are very, very serious in the spiritual realm. Help us to be mighty, God, in spirit and in truth for you. Oh, God, to hold on, to be not weary in well-doing. God, to not be short on prayer, but continue to cry out to you. Lord, in behalf of the needs that those we know about, Lord, please touch and minister. Oh, thank you for touching Rayla, God, for helping the baby to be okay. Let things continue to heal, Lord. God, give us souls, Lord, we pray. I pray for these that are uh, fighting any kind of illness in our bodies, Lord. We pray you to touch each home, each family, God. Strengthen your people, God, with your might. God, in your spirit, Lord, in their spirit as well, we pray today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, give us hearts that's teachable in every area by the Holy Ghost. Oh, that we can be led by you, Lord. Oh, God, here am I, use me. Show me how to go out and come in, Lord, I pray. How to be faithful, Lord. Not to check out early, God, emotionally. Oh, Lord, but to fight the good fight of faith, Lord. Hallelujah, we praise you, Lord, and we thank you today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Oh, God, you saw every hand, Lord, you know every need. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, you're wonderful. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Come on, let's get
in a place to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. Get your hand on Sister Hannah's going to come and lead us in some worship this morning. And let's just magnify the Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus, he 
Oh, 
praise the Lord. The joy of the Lord. Amen. It's wonderful. Amen. He's good to us. What is it? He does something and addeth no sorrow. He blesses us. Amen. His mercies are new every morning. He blesses us with great things in Him. And I'm just glad that uh, regardless of the condition of the world around us, amen, we can realize that uh, that God is faithful, yes. amen, to keep us. Amen. He said, uh, uh, he told Peter, he said, thou art Peter. And he said, upon you, I'm going to build my church upon Peter, upon this rock. Amen. The rock that God was going to help Peter to become. Amen. amen. And that walk with the Lord. And he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. The devil will, will uh, get out there and jump in front of us and try to uh, put up a blockade. But uh, he's either toothless or there's an angel that's about to stop him. Amen. Or God will give us the strength we need. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Who's got a good testimony this morning? All right. I woke up this morning and loved the Lord. And before I even had a thought, I heard the Lord say, I go scripture, uh, Hebrews 10 25, amen, for us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, and uh, you say, well, uh, you know, we, we hear that all the time, I tell you what, we sing, uh, Jesus is the sweetest name I know, nothing but the blood, amazing grace, amen, all these songs, we sing them over and over and over again, and they're just like the Word of God. Amen. They're not equal to the Word of God. But sometimes you read and you read and you don't get near as much out of it this time. Amen. As you're about to the next time. Yes, or near as much last time as you're about to this time. Amen. Yes. But we just keep on reminding ourselves to stay strong in the Lord. Yes. And in the power of His might. Amen. Anybody else got a testimony? Amen. All right. Always something. Amen. saying, but I know it was good, Amen. and I know it had something to do with we're glad to see you, and it seems like she was praying for you about something that I don't honestly don't remember, but I tell you what, how good and how sweet it is for brother to dwell together in unity, one heart, one mind, one accord in God, amen, amen, amen. anybody else, Sister Angela, 
I love the Lord, and I was thinking about a, a Bible study that Sister Kim shared with me. I was having trouble with my version. I'm like, just try it so we can see if it works. And she picked just the perfect one, and it's talking about how when we get to feeling kind of upset or, or um, anxious in our lives, how we can bow. Right. And it's an acronym meaning bow, B for bow, actually get into a position of humility in front of God. O is for offload, offload all your worries and carry yeah, cares good. to him because he said that hit, our burden is easy. Uh, with him and so we just give him all our cares cast your cares upon him and then w is worship and uh, worship uh, i i go to school um at south grand prairie high school i'm a teacher there and there's a little girl she's in a younger grade so i don't know her as a student but she always wears a sweatshirt that says worship is a weapon yes and uh and i've talked to her about that before just in the restroom and uh worship is a weapon and so if we're ever feeling anxious or upset we can we can bow, we can offload our cares, and we can worship. Amen. 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 I appreciate everybody's testimonies. Tell you what, Sister Smith, she may not be as, I hope spunky is a good word, but she may not be as spunky as she was five or ten years ago, but she was excited to get up and testify about yes. Jesus, and I love that. Amen. All right. I'm thankful for the goodness of the Lord. I'm thankful for his mercy. I, I really am. I'm thankful for God's mercy that he showed on my life. Yes. Amen. Um, reading in Jonah, and we read a story about a preacher who didn't feel like the people he was supposed to be preaching to deserved God's mercy. Oh, God. And, and that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, it stirred my heart. Because we're living in a world where a lot of people, if you want to be judgmental, right, don't deserve right. God's mercy. I mean, if you look out, there are people that are blaspheming God. There are people that are cursing Him. There are people that are um, living life and, and even telling people adamantly that there is no God, working against oh, God. But if we read in other parts of the New Testament, it's said, and such were some of you. Right. Because some of us... We're blasphemers, right? And using God's name in vain. And <clears throat> some of us worked against God, and some of us, yes. okay. and some of us were God haters, yeah. and lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, and mm-hmm. and making ourselves our idol. Yes. And so it kind of stirred my heart just to remind me. We don't choose who God's mercy goes to. That's it. Amen. Right. Okay. <laughs> and um, I just want to exhort you guys to not uh, stop yourself when when witnessing. Come on. When you see someone, you're like, eh, they don't really look like they would receive it. Yeah. Witness anyway. Yes, amen. amen. You see someone you're like, well, they be honest. They look like they they really set their bed for themselves. They they're just gonna live in it. God help us. Witness anyway. Yes, amen. God, God's extended mercy beyond what we've ever deserved. Oh, Grace amen. beyond what we've ever uh, uh, merited. Right. To us. Right. Amen. And, and I want to be faithful to share the light of the Lord to, to the lost and dying world. To be a, a faithful minister. We read in Jonah how he did get it right. He, God, God had to do some convincing on him. It didn't yeah. uh, happen uh, just to, as a smooth process. But God did get him yes, back amen. on the path where he, he went to Nineveh. Yes. Uh, and what we read in the end was that Nineveh saw revival because of a, Jonah's delayed obedience to the Lord. Yes. And uh, I, I, I don't want us to have delayed obedience because delayed obedience comes with consequences. Amen. Uh, I want us to be obedient to God's word. Amen. To witness and share the light of, of the Lord to, to be the salt of the earth as we are called to be. Amen. Thank God he didn't just have a revival. What kind of revival did he have, Brother Donovan? To date, the best one yet. Amen. Amen. The best one yet. Amen. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, he uh, uh, he saw a lot of sons and daughters, I believe, come home to the Lord. And God help us to be encouraged and know that our God can do the same today. And we're praying to that effect. All right, anybody else? I don't want to cut you short. All right. 
Amen. We're going to come to you at this time this morning for the Sunday morning tithes and offerings. And while they're getting ready and coming, I want to say thank you to each of you for being faithful and just continuing to continue on in the Lord and be faithful and not be weary in well-doing. I'm telling you, we're not going to always stay like this. I believe God Amen. is going to help us and give us some souls. Amen. Amen. Yes, Father, we thank you for this day. We lift up and praise and bless the name of Jesus Christ today. Father, we ask that you bless us also in giving. We bless this, we ask that you bless the gift today as well as the giver. For this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen for the Lord. And I'll tell you what, he keeps good records. He's a wonderful God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Sometimes you just have to just give by faith. And, uh, you know, it's kind of the way we live. Is sometimes we live by faith. But I tell you what, uh, the devil uh, does everything he can to blind anyone he can from seeing what God has in store for. And if we could just get our loved ones. I mean, I talked to a couple of different people just in the last day or two that's supposed to be here this morning and said they was going to be here. And they're planning on being here. And I believe they were sincere. And I believe we need to pray for God to just help them and give them strength and give them whatever they need that maybe should God tarry another day, another opportunity, that they'll be here next time. Amen? But let's go on and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen? All right. Praise the Lord. All right. At this time, Sister Hannah's going to come and minister in song. Yes. It is a mighty, mighty weapon. Yes. 
And let's not forget that today. I Amen. love the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Uh, to Romans chapter 10. I'm going to read the first 13 verses. Romans chapter 10. Verses 1 through 13. And I just chose for a title, The Value of Faith. The Value of Faith. Amen. Amen. We got to hold on. We can't listen uh, to if you if there's any voice or any thought that comes to your mind and you don't recognize it to be from the Word of God and you don't uh, recognize it to be positive or edifying, uh, what does the Bible say? Whatsoever. Is just and pure and lovely and of a good report. And there's others there. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And I'm telling you, we'll just hold on. The battle's the Lord's. Amen. All right. Chapter 10, verse 1, Romans. It says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses declare, dis, uh, describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart who shall ascend unto heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I could go on and read uh, several of the verses and finish out this chapter, but I'm stopping right there. But I want to talk to you today about being faithful to do it God's way. Amen. Being faithful to live God's way. Amen. Being faithful to trust God to do what God said he would do. Yes. Amen. And God, if we look at the word of God, we'll see that usually when God is not working, very often God is not working in the time frame that we desire because you and I, are not yielding in some area that God is wanting us to yield, to be sensitive, to be caring. Amen. So many times people wait until they're just literally at their wits, wits end to turn or cry out to God. I mean, we uh, where is that fine line of how bad something has to be to get us to pray? I mean, it's according to who it is. If so-and-so says, I've got a headache, we'll say, well, you know, uh, get you a couple of Advil or Tylenol or whatever. But I want you to know God is a God that still heals. God is a God that still ministers. He still saves. He's still looking for people to show himself strong. Amen. In behalf of their needs, in behalf of what he's wanting to do. But uh, God don't look always as we look at things. But God looks at it perfectly. Amen. 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 Father, we love you today. We just thank you and we praise you, Lord, for the blood. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the Holy Ghost, Lord, for what you do, for what you've done. 
Lord, for what you're going to do in each of our hearts and our lives. And I pray, God, that you help us to be sensitive to you. I pray, God, that you help us to hunger and thirst after righteousness, Lord, that we have a, 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 a covenant desire, God, to grow in you and to, uh, to yield to you and to surrender to you and to be what you want us to be, Lord. And I pray that we realize afresh today that, God, you can do all things regardless of how big the obstacle, Lord. Your power is greater. We praise you and we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Give us the courage, the faith, the remembrance, the strength, the relationship with you, God, to trust you to do what you desire to do in us and to ask you, God, even when the miracle seems to be a dire need and very big. Touch us and help us in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. 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 You can be seated this morning. <laughs> Amen. I was reading this week about uh, the revival. Amen. And I was reading about uh, uh, William Seymour there in the Azusa Street Revival. And, and I believe it was Los Angeles, California. It is. I got it written down here. Amen. This is when I had my direction going in another way. But I just didn't, not because I'm tight and chinchy, I just started right there, but I didn't plan on sharing that, but uh, I want you to know God, amen, can stir when things need to be stirred. God can send a fire when the place is very dry. Amen, son of man, can these bones live? Oh Lord, thou knowest. Amen, how many times was the devil whispering, amen, to Elisha, amen, that the, uh, the double manifold miracles that, that he had asked of the Lord, amen, that Elijah had, had not transpired yet, and when they were, uh, he is already uh, there, and, and uh, uh, you know, it was the final moments of whatever, and, and I believe he was already in the, in the grave, where he was he not, and there was somebody there, and they threw him in the grave, and when they threw him in the grave, y'all help me out, I'm getting it confused, was a, huh? Uh, was Elisha the one that they threw in the grave? Elisha was already in the grave, wouldn't he? No. Okay, all right. They threw him in on a man that was a dead man. And that was one miracle that had not been doubled that God had promised and he had asked of the Lord double. And remember, he started off with obeying. I don't know why I'm, I'm not read or studied any of this, as you can tell. But uh, uh, whenever, whenever the mantle fell from glory in the fiery chariot there, and uh, it fell down and uh, Elisha was there to, to scoop it up. And Brother Elisha didn't waste no time. He went to the Jordan River. And Brother, I'm telling you, the Jordan River was not always a friend to the man or the people of God but he was there and he smote the waters hither and thither and said where is the Lord God of Elijah and brother I'm telling you the Lord God of Elijah was right where he was supposed to be he was in the man of God he was in the child of God he was in the church of God early now if you will amen this is the church without which the gates of hell is not going to be able to stand against if they're not the church, the church can do anything that God deems necessary. The devil thinks he can block us, he can, he can thwart whatever God's wanting to do, he can discourage his people. But I'm telling you, be not weary. Hold on. How many times do people that have not had children pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and they go one or two years, three or four years sometimes and they've not seen that miracle but they hold on and they continue to trust and obey. Somebody said earlier trust and obey. They just continue to be faithful to the Lord. I was reading in Matthew 7 and 7 it said ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be amen, opened unto you. What is he saying? He's telling us to be not weary. He's telling us don't look at the natural. Don't look at the carnal. Don't look at what you see down here that's going to vanish one day. But look at those things that's not going to vanish. Those things that you can see are temporal. But those things that we don't see, they're supernatural. And they require faith and obedience for God to bring it to pass. I'm telling you, God has bigger plans for us 
that I'm sure we have for ourselves, we've got to be faithful. Amen. I want to talk to you today a little bit about having an understanding heart. Having an understanding heart and spirit and, and will toward the things of God. What are you talking about? I'm trying to tell you if you go over to uh, the book of, of uh, uh, Romans there and you begin to read a little bit. And you read in Romans chapter 8 in 1 and 2. It, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin con condemned sin in the flesh. What's he saying there? He's talking about making a way that seems to be right for yourself. He's talking about going your own. Many people today, they're satisfied and they're satisfied just to go to the house of God. and They're satisfied just to, uh, just to let the preacher carry the load. They're satisfied just to, amen, greet one another and pat each other on the back and see that this one, amen, has outpressed me again, amen, or whatever. But I'm telling you, when we go to the house of God, we need to go with such a fervent expectancy that God is going to do the first works over again. Why should we go with that expectancy? Because I've been praying to that effect. I've been trusting and being obedient as much as I know how to that effect. I've been asking God to do the first works all over again. In me, brother, I'm telling you, there's no time for retirement from God's army. God wants to do a great work through you and I. But you and I are going to serve God and, and manifest the power and the anointing and the faithfulness of God to God. The same way today that we did when we started this race, whether it was three years ago or 43 years ago, we got to follow the Lord. We got to follow on to know the Lord. Amen. We can go on over. Paul was telling them, I believe this is a scripture there. He was talking about if he could, he would give his own flesh. Amen. For his kinsmen. I may have it mixed up. But anyway, at some scripture there, let's go on down to verse 6. It says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, amen, the carnal mind, the fleshly mind, the mind that's just looking at the things that we can see and figure out and understand down here. Amen. The fleshly mind is seeking to just exist, just survive. It's stripped of the skin. If you look that up in the Greek, in that word carnally, it means to be stripped of the skin. Just the human nature. All it's concerned about is just surviving. Amen. With all of its frailties, its passions, its its physical frailties, it's moral frailties, amen, uh, like, a, like a chord on a piano, brother, you step down there and you hit a certain chord and it turns out to be G or C or A or D or whatever it is, amen, and it sounds great, it sounds magnificent, and on, on, right on time, but brother, you take them, when my granddaughters come over and they begin to take and get near the piano, they're making all kinds of music, brother, and I'm telling you, it is chaos. It does not sound very rhythmic. It does not sound very inspiring. But I'm telling you, brother, I was listening one day. Amen. I was listening to her. And she hit the keys there. And did you know she hit this key and then hit a key over to the right and hit a key over to the left. And then she hit another key and her eyes lightened up. And brother, I'm telling you, she's got talent. She's got potential. She can see and hear things today that she couldn't see and hear yesterday. You say, well, she's only four years old. What do you expect? I expect her to use what God has given her for God's glory. You wonder where this is coming from, those puppies we had. Uh, we didn't have them. The dog had them. But uh, you know what I mean. They've been obstructing our life ever since they showed up. And uh, I remember when Christopher was born. 
uh, I lost a little bit of my wife, and I still ain't never got her back. And uh, there was five more that followed her. You get Brad and Christopher and Danielle and Megan, Kaylee and Chase and Andrew, and uh, there's not much left for old Charlie. That's kind of the way we feel sometimes. I'm telling you, those puppies, those puppies, you know, from the moment they come out, I didn't see them the first moment or two, but within 20, 30 minutes, I saw them, however soon I could get around there. And uh, I'm telling you, there was one of them that was bigger and stronger, and it seems to be smarter than the rest of them. And did you know what he's doing? Already when they're in the kennel there, you know what he's doing? He's, he's just taking it easy and everything until he thinks it's necessary, but when he thinks it's necessary, he begins to take and open his mouth and just almost put the other one's head in it. You know what I mean? And I mean, at least the bottom jaw and everything. He's showing him how far to mess with him, I guess. And you know what? There's some of us that the devil has cried bluff on us and cried wolf on us or cried whatever on us to the point to where we don't even know. Amen. Remember, we read in the Word of God and, and we're going to we're going to look and some are going to point their finger. Is this? Is this the one that destroyed the nations? Is this the one that, that tried to rule the world and brought down so many? This? Yeah. And we need to realize, I don't even know if there was a silhouette there of the angels of God. I always said there was a third of the angels that fell. But brother, the smart two-thirds stayed in heaven. Amen. To stay with and be with the Lord. What are you saying? I'm trying to tell you we got to have faith to trust God and follow on to know the Lord. To be faithful because I believe Daddy used to say faith is God's currency. You can take faith and buy what you need in God. God's not for sale. Brother, I'm telling you, when you begin to pray or you begin to recognize a need and you go to the Lord, what you're doing is you're laying your understanding of the need before the Lord and giving Him all power to touch it, tweak it, change it in any way that it needs to be, that it might be according to His will. Why? That we might have the answer. That we might have the answer. We want God to bless and use the body of Christ while there's still time down here. While there's still opportunity. Go on down, if you will, to verse 9 there. And it said, but you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And I'm trying to tell us today that God wants us, amen, to be alive yes, in him. Amen. God wants us to be expecting in him. What does that mean? That means when somebody comes through the door and they've got needs that we don't have any idea about, but this one begins to take and, and cry out to God for God to do something today, and this one begins to cry out to God for God to do something today, and another one begins to cry out, and some were crying out on the way to church, and some were crying out this morning when they got up, and some were crying out before they went to bed last night, and God sees them, and God orchestrated Amen. For them to be right where they needed to be. Why? Because God wants to minister to them. And their faith may be a little weak. But brother, we can tear the roof off. Glory to God. He was born of four. What's he saying? Brother, there was people carrying him when he couldn't walk for himself. You and I need to be faithful. Amen. To trust God. Don't worry about our feelings. Don't worry about our emotions. Just ask God to help everything to stay in check according to God's will. Amen. Amen. God is wonderful and faithful. We know uh, Romans chapter 8. You know Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 8. Powerful, powerful scriptures to memorize. And, and Romans chapter 11, Psalm 23. There's plenty of them, but every one of them Amen. The Holy Ghost has access to, to bring back to our remembrance. When we've read them, when we've memorized them and meditated upon them. The psalmist said, I have more understanding than all my teachers for my meditations 
or upon my testimonies. What I saw happening in the word of God. You know, God didn't just sweep the dirt in under the rug. God dealt with the dirt. Some people got in a lot of trouble by not expecting God to deal with it sooner or in a different way. But God dealt with it the way it needed to be dealt with. Amen. Amen. God is faithful. In, in Romans chapter 9, amen, let me, let me share with you. In Romans 9, the first three verses, says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Here it is. And uh, uh, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. What's he saying there? He didn't really like what he saw. There was a lot of people that, that was in his family that were Jews. Brother, they were, they were the select, the elect of God, if you will, according to their thinking. Brother, that we were born free. Amen. Uh, one person told Paul, uh, Saul, or Paul there, he said, with a, for a great sum, amen, did I buy this freedom. Well, you and Paul said, I was freeborn. Amen. Of the tribe of Benjamin, I was freeborn. And I'm telling you, you and I weren't freeborn. We were born into slaves. Amen. The first time we were born into sin, we didn't know how to do good. We pretended like we could. We thought we could. We thought we could be victorious and, and run through a tube and jump over a wall. But brother, it didn't have the same significance that it had when God wrote it in his word. The devil is still trying to trip up God's people. Amen. There's things that I feel like God's dealing with me to talk to people about. Amen. Well, Pastor, what's wrong? Do you not have the courage? Well, I don't think it's courage that I like. Do you think God's ever desired something for any of your lives and you think he held on and he didn't bring that petition to you until the, thought, until the need was prevalent and ready in your life until it would come to fruit amen he don't want it to fall by the wayside how many times I want you to know there's things that you know there's things that has happened uh, you know, you're going to be tried. That's right. You're going to be tested. Yes. You got to be faithful. That's right. You can't be faithful all the way to one day or one hour before you die and then the battle's over. It's not everybody that goes to sleep and gently and lovingly and tenderly falls asleep and wake up in the arms of glory. Amen. Of the Lord all healed and everything perfect from then on out. Sometimes there's trials that we face that we don't understand. Things that we don't know how to deal with. But we want God's best. We want God's will. In every situation, understanding. Where is your understanding? According to God's understanding for you in this life. What is God trying to tell you that you may not be listening to as fervently as God is trying to speak to you? God wants to minister to you. He loves you. Amen. He said, I could wish myself accursed for my kinsmen, my family members, not just the people out that don't know the Lord, but the people that are Jews that are headed to a devil's hell. And they think they've got pedigree. They think they've got all that and then some. I'm telling you what, God, give us a burden for those that God has a burden for. And let us travail in God until Christ be formed in the people that God is laying upon our heart. You know, you may not always know what the need is. 
But I'm telling you, if God's showing you to pray, if God's showing you a burden, if God's showing you something that's weighing on you, you can rest assured if the desire and the motive is that they might be better, amen, because of your prayers. They might be better because of the burden that God is laying upon you. God is wanting to do something. The devil's probably not laying those thoughts on your hearts and mind. I'm telling you, weeping endures for a night, Amen. but joy comes in the morning. And there's some situations that the joy is not going to come in the morning until the weeping endures for the night. Yeah. That's right. We don't want to be carnally minded. We don't want to be comfortable. We don't want to be complacent or stuck we don't want to be to the point to where our vision has died we don't want to be to the place to where we really and truly are not expecting I believe it was our sister that said she came expecting for God to do something in the service this morning you know I want God's will for each and every one of our hearts and lives I want us to love one another with a godly love. I want us to be faithful. I'm not laying the road for compromise. God didn't give me something 5, 10, 15, 30, 40, 44 years ago. God didn't give it to me for me to give it away in a way that I lose it. God gave it to me for me to give it away in a way that his kingdom would be ex expanded and his will would be done. Amen. If you'll stand and be faithful to fight the good fight, amen, uh, Ananias and Sapphira, when they were there, and they owned that piece of land. And, and I'm telling you, I've known we've got some people in our church, man, they're, they've been so good, so good, so good. But I'm telling you, Ananias and Sapphira were good too. They made everything look so good. But you better know the heartbeat of God. You better know the will of God. Don't let the devil set a snare or a trap for you. I've not thought about even mentioning anything like this. This is something I've been praying about for a week. I don't know why. But I do know one thing. God loves each and every one of us more than we can ever imagine. Amen. And God wants his best for us. It's not a time. It's not a time to build bigger barns for us right now, most of us. It's, it's not a time for us to get slack. It's a time for us to be faithful. The missionaries that we support up until the last probably year and a half has not changed in five or six years hardly. And God dealt with us about helping another guy. Amen. I found out about it. We have, wait a minute, $50 a month. It ain't much. It ain't much. But I almost missed it. I almost missed it and didn't do it. But I really felt like God wanted me to do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, I waited and passed the time that we sent the other missionaries checks and had to send it late. But I'm telling you, God dealt with me to be faithful. Yeah. Here the last four, five, six months, my mind been, I'm, I'm an easy sell, I'm a softy. I'm gullible or whatever for that kind of stuff. My wife told me, she said, don't you order nothing else without me approving it. Now, she didn't really do that, but it might, it might have been appropriate. I ordered some coffee. We got it at a good deal. It was a good deal. I don't know what it was, but it had to be a good deal for me to get it. It was going to help me. Help me to be a man. Help me to be healthy. Help me to be strong. Help me to be whatever. And I didn't like it. <laughs> well, wouldn't you know, in about three, four, five weeks, here come another box of it, more than I ordered. 
And we found out somebody that liked it. And we was too embarrassed to be a blessing because it was going to show our, not stupidity, just gullibility or whatever the right word is. Of course, we stopped it as quick as we got on top of it and could. But I almost missed being a blessing because I didn't want to be exposed in any way. And let me tell you, you don't want God to look at you and say, did you sell the land for so much? And you say, yes, for so much. This is not the time to change the, the rules of the game. You do it the same way you've been doing it. If anything, you tighten up. You tighten up and be faithful. And I want you to know I ain't talked to nobody. I ain't talked to God very much. Mainly just listening and said, oh God. Oh God. When, when you hear a pastor say it, oh God. You know something's heavy. It's, it's too heavy for me. But I want God's best for you. I want God's best for you. And I would just ask you, if you've done it a certain way all your Christian life, don't compromise now. It don't matter. You be faithful. You be faithful. You be faithful. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad you're serving a God that's in control? Amen. Romans chapter 9. I'm not going to keep you a long time. I've, I've got this page of notes and this third of a page of notes and then I'm through. But go to verse 6 of chapter 9. And you know, let me go ahead and read 4 or 5. And six as well. What he's talking about, he's talking about them that are Jews, and he's trying to tell them they're not all Jews. Just because jewelry is in their blood veins, he's talking about another set of blood veins, so to speak. He's talking about a different citizenship. He's going to bless the Jew, and these gentlemen can help me when they start teaching on that and stuff. Uh, God is going to deal with the Jew. Amen. But I'm telling you, he loves them. And there's never one of them that he's created that he don't love. But verse number four says, Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of, of God and the promise? Whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are of the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Listen to what he says now. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by her father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to the election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Why do you think God picked on Esau? God picked on Esau because of Esau. Yeah. Because God saw what Esau was going to be. Why did God pick on Judas so much? Couldn't 
the Son of God dealt with Judas that he had not accepted 30 pieces of silver and bribe, be bribed to, to betray the Son of God to the point that Jesus, or the Word of God says, good worry for that man that he had never been born. Any point Jesus could have ministered, but us out the Son of God with a kiss. I don't know when the line was that repentance could not be repented of anymore. But I believe when the fulfillment of Scripture began to be fulfilled there, at that point, it began to be pretty clear that he was going the way of the flesh. And though he would seek the Lord later with bitterness and tears for help, help was not going to be found. What are you saying? I'm trying to tell you God is wanting to get some of our attention in areas that most of us don't even know about. But today is a good day to surrender. Today is a good day to repent and say, God, if you'll help me, I'll serve you. God, whatever you're trying to show me, I'm ready to see it. Whatever you're wanting to do, God, through me, I'm ready to do it. Amen. God, help us. Help us, Lord. Going down to verse 10 there, 10 through 15. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by her father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I, I just read that, didn't I? Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. Amen. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I, have, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will he hardeneth. God don't want us to be finding fault in others and be living loosely in areas in our own life. But God wants us to have an understanding heart that's clear and open and sensitive to the will of God. And Psalm 119, talking about having an understanding heart. Verse 104 said, Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Through thy precepts. Amen. This is through thy proper appointment. And this is through thy commandments and statutes and laws. Through thy testimony of thy word. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Any time the Spirit of the Lord begins to nudge our heart to receive from God, do you realize that I've been in church with people that God was dealing with them and they did not yield and submit to God? And outside of everything that the natural man sees would be the only way you could see them in heaven today from the testimony that was shared 
from the witnesses that were there. Do you want anybody to be in hell? No. No, no, no. My ex-brother-in-law, I knew him since he was a little 11 or 12 year old boy. Had an altar in his home that he had built for when he was going to get back right with God. He had good intentions. And he may have made it. And I hope and pray he did. I love him. I love him. But let me tell you, I'm not the judge. I'm not the one that's going to decide. But one thing we can do is anytime the Spirit of the Lord deals with our heart about anything in our personal life, we need to have clean hands and a pure heart and say, God, what do you want me to do? I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'll never do it again and mean it. And realize you shouldn't have got in that predicament anyway. But you got in that predicament I got in that predicament because there was a laxness in my life instead of the fervency that God was pleased with. Can you imagine? Here I am trying to be a pastor, professing to be a pastor. And I almost missed the opportunity to be a blessing because of what somebody was going to think. You know, we're living in a world today that there's a lot of these people, they think they can tell you what you're thinking. And they think they can try you and hold you accountable for it. They're judge and jury. But we got one judge. And he's going to judge us according to the Word of God. Amen. Psalm 119, verse 5, says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I believe Psalm 119, verse 11 or 111, says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Uh, Psalm 119, 130 says, The opening up of thy word the entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. The opening up of thy word. I looked that up and that's talking about that opening up, it, it, it giveth light. It's talking about the breaking forth as the dawning of a new day, a new opportunity. How the, the, the sun shines and breaks forth. And dispels the darkness. I'm telling you, there's a lot of things that's light in God. There's a lot of things that's understanding in God. And God wants to lead us into the truths and the awareness to the revealed Word of God and will of God in some of these areas. Amen. God wants us to be faithful. The opening up of thy word. It talks about the willingness to be taught. The willingness to hear correction. The willingness to receive help. That's where I was that night that I sat back there. You say we've heard that six times in the last couple of months. Let me tell you. God forbid that anybody not listen when God is trying to get our attention about bigger little things. But that night as everybody else was winding down and I had told the Lord just one or two or three days or a week or two, I don't remember, but not very long before, God don't let me wind up in hell. God don't let me wind up in hell. And that night I felt the tug of God on my heart. And the devil wanted me to just go out and put it in neutral and coast and he'd deal with me another time. But that night I come right down here and I knelt and I didn't know how to pray fancily. I really didn't. I said, God, if you'll help me, 
I'll serve you. If you'll help me, I'll serve you. I mean, I know I wouldn't know how without his help. I know I wouldn't make it without his help. But I'm telling you, that night when I come down there, I didn't shed any tears or feel any Holy Ghost bumps or nothing like that. There was an understanding that was opened up to me that gave me hope that if I would just do what I knew to do, God would take care of the rest. And I went home and I destroyed paraphernalia. I destroyed drugs. I destroyed anything. I mean, snuff. I destroyed anything. I said, God, you'll have to help me. And I'm telling you, God's been helping me for 44 years now. He's been helping me. You know, whenever talking about understanding whenever Jesus' mother was there at the wedding of Cana in Galilee and um, Mary came up to Jesus and she said, Jesus, they have no wine. And he said, my time has not yet come. Or Basically, some commentators say, he said, woman, what have I to do with you? My time has not yet come. Or well, I don't know, uh, remember for sure what he said, but did you know the people, for the most part, at the wedding had no idea they were out of wine? And did you know a lot of times the church has no idea of the desperate plight and urgent situation that's taking place in our loved ones, in your loved ones, in my loved ones? The accuser accuses, he lies, he tries to discourage. She went to the servants and said, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. There were six water pots, I believe, there. And he said, fill them up with water. And he said, throw out. I'm sure he blessed it and they threw out or whatever. And I'm going from memory. Y'all be merciful to me. Y'all know there's not much there to work with here lately. But it's going to get better. The man that they took the wine to for him to test it, to see what kind of grade it was, how it would move itself aright in the... He was clueless. He knew how it was supposed to taste when it was good. But the servants knew. Yeah. And he said, every man serves the best first, but you've saved the best for the last. I'm going to tell you, I believe that Roman guard there that said, truly this was the Son of God. I believe those servants that were there, I'd be shocked if every one of them, if they were not Christians, didn't surrender their heart and life to the Lord. That, that moment, we don't need to wait for a convenient moment. We need to be faithful for the Lord now. In Matthew chapter 13, talking about the parable of the, sow of the sower, says, Hear ye therefore par the parable of the sower. And that here means give audience, pay attention, listen up, think about it. He's trying to get them to listen. He said, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. You remember sometimes it springs up but it don't have much depth of earth and lasts but a while and some has thorns and some has fertile ground. But those that were the wayside, they didn't profit where it was to 
prophet when it was sown. But when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, how is your understanding today? Do you realize that? Do you realize today that God, if He's dealing with your heart, it's another time that God is seeking to draw you nearer to Him. God does not need us. Right. Remember, he can, he can cry to the rocks to cry out for Him. But we need God Amen. so desperately. Amen. And if you'll just surrender your will to the Lord, your mind, say, God help me, show me how, let me know what to do, I'll do it, Lord. I recall one man that this missionary or minister or whatever was witnessing to this man and he began to reprimand him or say something. He said, man, if he said, if you really believed, he said, if I believed what you said, he said something to the effect that I'd crawl on my hands and knees 50 or 100 miles or whatever it was to get somebody to come to God. It's not just a hobby horse. It's heaven and hell. We don't know if it's the last chance. We don't know. God may not be even dealing with you the way he's dealing with two or three around you. I don't know what God is wanting to do, but I know God is not wanting you just to be a hearer of God's word and not have your understanding enlightened. God wants us to be doers of the word. When I talk to people and witness to people at the restaurant, at the store, at the station, whatever, I really expect some kind of results. Brother Nick, very seldom do I expect them to kneel down there on the, the greasy uh, asphalt or concrete and surrender to God. But I am telling you that I'm asking God, Lord, whatever they need. Yes. If this is seed, let it find a fertile heart. God, if this is water, let it get where it needs to get. Right. That they'll surrender to you. And then any time, not every time, but any time I sense that I really was led of the Lord and I sense that God was wanting to do something in them, I try to pray for them just like the World War II vet at Walmart. I don't know that I've ever met him again. I may never meet him again down here. But I'm telling you, our prayers can make a difference. Amen. This is January. January used to be uh, to stop abortion month. That, you know, somewhere toward the end of the month and focus on the family used to let us know. And we've gotten it under control in some areas. And now the... the uh, Governor or whatever of Louisiana, I believe. Mike, whatever his name is. Thompson, Thomas. He's the new Speaker of the House. Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson. I'm telling you, he's a God-fearing man. He's a God-fearing man. How do you know? Brother, he jumps in the pit with the lions and exposes for everybody to see what he is. And if you think they're not examining him, they're examining him. And I want you to know God loves you. Don't let the word today fall by the wayside. Is there anybody that wants to surrender to God today and say, Lord, I want to make heaven? Anybody, preacher, will you pray for me? Oh, God, can you help me? Can you deal with me? I don't know the heart cry of each one of you. I don't know your disposition and where you're at spiritually. But I'm telling you, there's help in God. And if you don't feel like you can do it right now, I wouldn't even go out the door before I'd say, God, please help me. Please help me. Please don't stop dealing with me. Amen. It takes faith to surrender to God. It takes faith to listen to God and act upon it. And God said, I would that you not be hearers only, 
but that you be doers of the word. Amen. Regardless of how hard, how calloused, how unfaithful we've been in the past, God wants to love you and wants you to recognize that love and give you an understanding heart. Amen? Amen. 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 Realize also there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And a lot of people get on that road and that path that I'll do it another time. I'll do it another time. Don't do that. They get on that path that, well, I've blessed and I've done and I've gave and I've sacrificed and I've done all that and everything. I'm telling you, I'd love for all of us to feel a peace instead of just you feel a peace. I don't want just, she's fine, praise the Lord. I don't want just my kids to feel a peace and me have a troubled heart. But I want us to have a peace. Praise the Lord. Father, we love you today. God, you know my heart. You know, God, the innocency of my heart. Lord, you know nothing I've said today has been selfish or about me. Please, 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 God, help God, I pray that you give ears to, to the hearts that need to hear and surrender, Lord. Oh, God, don't let a few months, a few weeks, a few days, a few hours, a few minutes, even a few years of blessing temporally hinder whatever it is that you may be wanting to do, Lord. Please help today. Give us souls for your kingdom, I pray. Help us to have something to present to you that's faithful in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Touch our church. Let the fire of Pentecost burn in us, God. Let us be alive in you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand this morning? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I want you to know I appreciate you for being here. I appreciate you for praying and for helping me in the message and for not sitting down on the preaching. I don't know what God's wanting to do in each heart here. But I'm telling you, I want your sons and daughters in heaven. I want my sons and daughters in heaven. Amen. And I don't want anything we're doing or not doing to hinder them making it there. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Nick, if you will, dismiss us in a word of prayer. Father, we ask that you bless our hearts today. We pray that the message we heard was from God, was anointed by God. Help us to grow and to mature and to lie to ourselves and to grow in the spirit, Lord, to modify the deeds of the flesh. We ask today, Lord, that the word we heard will be like water for us. To feed our souls oh, today. Oh, life. To remind us that we ought to walk in obedience and faithfulness to it, Father. And if we pray, Father, until we meet again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands with everyone. Let our visitors know we love them and we're so glad they're here. And you walk with God. Amen. 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 God bless you. Try to be back tonight. Amen.